Okay, we'll call to order the uh, May meeting of the City of Florence Design Review Board. Uh, sorry for the delay. We were waiting to get quorum. Uh, we got some of our members okay, present. We'll call to so order the some present uh, May meeting of the City of Florence Design Review Board. First matter of business for the delay. We're waiting to get quorum. Uh, approval of okay, minutes. Some of our members we'll present. Call to order the meeting of the City of Florence Design Review Board. First matter of business for the delay. We're waiting to get quorum. Uh, approval okay, of minutes. Some of our members present. Okay, okay, all right sorry about the technical difficulties today um so we have a motion to approve the minutes as submitted is there a second i'll second all right all in favor say aye aye, aye. any opposed all right the minutes are adopted First matter before us today for hearing is DRB case number 2021-08. It's a request for certificate of appropriateness for townhouse development uh, on six parcels uh, of land located at 113, 114, 115, and 116 East Pine Street and 319 and 321 Railroad Avenue. Tax map numbers are as follows, 90087-06-001. 90088-06-002, All of those parcels are located in the D3 Arts and Cultural Overlay District. Uh, the board will take staff's report. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Let me share my screen here. All right. Yes, the applicant um, is requesting a certificate of appropriateness to construct 19 townhouses. These are the six parcels. They are located on the north and south sides of East Pine Street between Railroad Avenue and South Dargan Street. This is a close up of them. Um, the city of Florence owns all six of these parcels. They currently are zoned a mixture of central business district and neighborhood conservation 6.2. The four parcels on the north side of Pine Street went to planning commission last night with a request to be rezoned to the CBD, which, is, which does allow townhouses. The NC 6.2 does not. Um, and that rezoning request was given approval by the Planning Commission and will go before the City Council next. Um, the um, properties are vacant right now, so all of the new construction will be um, meeting the design guidelines. Um, this is a picture of the elevation of the townhouses, and there will be 19 individual units uh, right now. In a moment, you'll see how they're laid out. But as you can see, it's, it will be a very traditional um, facade on these buildings with articulated windows and doors and roof line. This is an overview of the uh, six parcels and the way the uh, townhouses will be laid out. Each one will have a uh, one car garage and then a surface parking for one car will also be provided on site to the interior of the site. These are some close ups of each of them. Um, as you can see, the 113 and 115 East Pine, which is the one most farthest to the west, will have six townhouses on it. The one on the south side will have seven, and then the one along railroad will have um, six. The materials that will be used will be traditional um, brick and wood trim, uh, black asphalt roof shingles. Um, standard windows and ironwork as shown. And the, um, as you can see here, the uh, property is now vacant. Um, and the consultants that are doing the work for us are, is available via Zoom if you had any questions for her. But that concludes staff's report. Thank you. Uh, does any board member have any questions for staff? All right, 
Hearing none, we'll open this matter for a public hearing. If anyone here would like to speak to this case, uh, please come up to the microphone. Anyone on Zoom that would like to speak to this case, please let us know. Right. We'll close the public hearing on this case and open it for board discussion. Uh, is there any discussion or motion on this uh, application? I'll make a motion to accept as presented. Okay. Uh, is there a second to that motion? Second. I believe Mr. Okay. Tutter just sign signified he's second to the motion. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Certificate will be issued. Next matter before us today is DRB case number 2021-09, request for certificate of appropriateness for the demolition of a house located at 440 West Chevis Street, tax map number 90074-07-004. That property is located in the D1 Redevelopment Overlay District. We'll take staff's report. Yes, the applicant is requesting a certificate of appropriateness to demolish the house located at 440 West Chevis Street. Um, it is located between, on the south side of Chevis, between McQueen and Worley Street and it is in the CBD district. The um, applicant is the um, PD Land Trust and they are purchasing the house at 448, which is right next door. It's a large brick house to be their new offices. But the owner of these two parcels um, is selling them as a, as a parcel. And the Land Trust does, uh, not have, does not have any use for the house at 440. Plus it is in pretty bad shape. So they are requesting um, permission to take it down. It went before the historical commission. Here's some photos, the interior and the exterior. Uh, it went before the historical commission Monday night and they found no historic significance to it. And they did issue a, a record of official action for its demolition. Um, and then these are pictures of the vicinity. It's a mixture of commercial buildings and old, large old houses, but it is all commercial use for the most part. Um, that brick house on the lower right picture is where the PD Land Trust will have their offices. And then this is the house immediately to the left of it. And here's the signed ROA from the uh, Historical Commission. So that concludes staff's report. Thank you. Any questions for staff? All right, hearing none, we'll open this matter for public hearing. If anyone here would like to speak to this case, uh, please come to the podium. All right, uh, anyone on Zoom that would like to speak to this case, please let us know. Pierce, this is Lyles Cooper. Can you hear me? Again, uh, go ahead. All right, great. Thank you. Um, I th thank you all for reviewing this project today. We're really excited about um, making our permanent home downtown and um, being able to utilize the space at 440 for a community garden and a parking lot and eventually a, a gathering space. Um, we're excited about doing an upfit on the adjacent brick building that's in really good condition and having that as our, our permanent home. If anybody has any questions for me, I'd be happy to ask answer them. One of the issues that we have sometimes with demolitions is uh, between now and whenever the garden and such are built is, uh, will you be you know, putting grass down or something in the meantime so that it's not just a dirt lot? Yes, yeah, so um, we're contracting with LH Stokes to do the demolition and the disposal. And at the same time, they're actually going to bring in the gravel for the parking area um, that will cover the majority of the foundation area of the demolished building. And we'll be using the brick columns from the current building as um, the cornerstones of the community garden which we'll be able to do pretty quickly um, within a few months. 
Thank you. Any other questions? The only thing I would have to add is um, we have decided to Pam Osborne, the current owner, is going to go ahead and and apply for the permit herself and not us since we don't own the property yet. She's going to go ahead and do the demo um, and then we'll purchase 440 from her once it's demoed in June. Any other questions? All right, any other members of the public that would like to speak to this case? All right, hearing none, we'll close the public hearing portion of this uh, and open it for board discussion. Uh, I think this is a good example of a reuse um, for a parcel that meets our meets expectations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to have a garden, I think will be lovely <laughs> right. on this spot. Any other uh, comment or questions from board members? Hearing none, is there a motion? I move we accept the application okay. as presented. There's a motion to accept the application as presented. Uh, is there a second? I'll second. All right, Mr. Carson seconds. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? All right, we'll issue the certificate. Thank you. The next matter uh, has a deferral request, so we just need to approve that. This is for case number 2021-10, uh, property located at 273 West Evans, tax map 90167-01-001. Property is in the H1 Historic Overlay District. The applicant has asked for a 30-day deferral on that one. We received we the application. From them in today, yeah. Oh, we did. We received their application today, so they would like to be on next month's agenda. All right. Uh, all in favor of deferring this application to, until June, say aye. Uh, uh, any opposed? Uh, all right. We'll defer that one. Uh, the next matter is DRB case number 2021 11, a request for a certificate of appropriateness for a chain link fence on the rear of the lot located at 661 South McQueen Street. Tax map number 90076-02-008. Properties located in the D4 Timrod Park Overlay District. Uh, the board will take staff's report. All right. Thank you all. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right, so the applicant, Mr. Jerry Hudson, is requesting permission to keep a chain link fence um, that was constructed initially uh, without a certificate of appropriateness. Uh, it was a codes enforcement issue that when it was brought to our attention. Um, here's 661 South McQueen Street. As you said, it's in the Timrod Park Overlay District um, in NC 6.2. So here is an aerial photo of the lot, and the red line represents the um, location of the fence that was constructed. Uh, in the Unified Development Ordinance, it does allow for chain link fences on street side yards. It is a corner lot. Um, if a hedge is planted on the outside and maintained at the height of the fence, just to screen it from public view. So here are some photos of the house uh, from the front uh, from South McQueen Street and then the secondary front of the house along Poplar Street where the fence is located. Um, here's the fence uh, next to the driveway. Um, it goes from the house um, along parallel to Poplar Street and it's a, a black powder coated chain link fence. The um, applicant has since, uh, after construction, did plant uh, six purple diamond Laura petulums and three sunshine ligustrum shrubs, uh, you can see in these photos, and they will grow to a height that will completely screen the fence uh, as required in the Unified Development Ordinance. Um, so for the design guidelines, uh, 
new additions uh, the fence can be removed in the future if necessary with absolutely no effect on the building um, the height the applicant has installed a black chain link fence along the house's uh, secondary front um, because the fence is not opaque it will not obstruct the line of vision across um, chain link fence is not a traditional material but as we said he he did plant a hedgerow which will completely screen it in the future um, See, and that just talks about the planning, the purple diamond, Laura Petulums. The fence is about four feet tall, um, and the fence is 40 feet long, running parallel to Poplar Street. And that does conclude staff's report. Thank you. Any questions for staff? I've got a, I've got a question, Scott. <clears throat> um, is the is the spirit of the of the uh, the ordinance where it talks about the landscaping be at the level of the of the fence? Um, is that meant to be eventually or immediately? I know in the past uh, for uh, on Graham Street we did allow uh, three years for the hedgerow to grow and mature. Um, so I, I I think previously we have allowed a little bit of time. So, and I guess I would ask maybe somebody like Eric, is this, are those varieties going to get that high within a reasonable amount of time? Yeah, those two plants should reach that height within three years. Okay. That answers my question. You have the board questions for staff? All right. Uh, then we'll open this for public Hearing. If anyone here would like to speak to this application, please come up. Yes, sir. I'd like to speak about that, this application. If you don't mind, just say your name. For My name is Jerry Hudson, owner of the property. And the reason we put this fence up is uh, if you go to that slide, you go to that slide? Uh, sure. Yes, sir. Show the house the houses, and I'll tell you why we put the fence up. This one, sir, or back another one? I'll go back one more. Uh, right there. You see the house beside us? You'll see where the wooden fence is? That was a drug house for two years, and we never, we had video of drug dealings going on in that house next door. Never could get anybody to resolve anything on there. Um, so we put up the wooden fence. So in the meantime, our house is on the corner, and it's used by all kind of traffic. Um, all the time. I mean, on our camera, we've got people walking through three o'clock, two o'clock, one o'clock in the morning. So we had to put up something. If they weren't going to do anything about drug dealing next door, we knew they weren't going to do anything about people walking through our yard at all times of night. I mean, we're finding syringes. Uh, my wife has a compost bucket out there. She found two butcher knives, which don't belong to us. So somebody's even dropping stuff in compost. So they eliminate the problem, which we knew that nobody else was going to resolve. We had to put up something and the fence had to be the only thing. Now we knew we were supposed to put up an aluminum fence, but the price of aluminum right now is because of COVID is is just crazy. So we went with a chain link fence. We didn't want to just put up a metal fence. We want to put up something that was attractive in the meantime. Um, so after we put the fence up six hours later, we got a complaint, which every one of my neighbors came by and said, that's, that's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard. Why would they complain about you putting up a fence that actually looks well? I mean, we didn't have six hours to plan anything, but I know in Grand Street, it's been over two, three years, the uh, fence has been put up, nothing's been done. So I think in the overlay district, historic, it's kind of a selective enforcement what goes on there. I think Derek sent me a note, the first thing he said is maintain the integrity of that neighborhood. I would take any one of you guys right now with me on any night, we walk that neighborhood and you tell me all the properties that are not being maintained in that neighborhood. There's seven on Queen Street right now that should be almost condemned. That's not maintaining the neighborhood. It's bringing the price of those houses down. Uh, if that, if our goal is to maintain the neighborhood, then certainly we got more on the books than a chain of defense. And I, I would, I would challenge each one of you guys to come with me one night and walk our neighborhood and tell me that that's that's what's going on in the, in the historic district. 
There's nothing historic about that district. As much as we'd like to think it is, it's not historic. I'll challenge you, any one of you to come with me one night and I can show you the houses that are not being maintained. The two beside me, the house that you just saw up there, they're putting vinyl siding on that house. I don't see any permits. I don't see any review board things going on in that house. The house beside me, the paint's coming off of it. Uh, houses down the plywood windows are putting put up. I mean, I don't see any, I don't see, I just see selective enforcement going on. I don't know if it's the manpower or we just don't have time to do it or nobody calls or I just I don't I just don't know how a 40 foot chain link fence could be that big of a deal. Somebody had to answer that. I, I understand your frustration and, and certainly uh, our goal here is just to try to enforce the ordinances and do the best we can to help support the neighborhood. But I would encourage you to uh, talk with and work with your neighborhood association. They've uh, been very active over the years. Well, uh, right now we don't have a neighborhood association, so we've been. I mean, there's only two people showing up in the meetings, the lane comes and maybe two other people. Um, we started a, a network app for our neighborhood, trying to get more people involved in what's going on in that neighborhood. Unfortunately, with COVID, we could we could we haven't met for a year. And even when we met, people did more worried about whether a trash can was put in or out. Uh, it hadn't been about uh, maintaining the property or the properties at all. And certainly would encourage you to notify the city if you do see any. Uh, construction that's uh, in violation of the ordinances so that they can investigate. And oh, we, we, can sort of, we can do that every day. I mean, I could call the city every day about something, but I, I, I'm just like, if they were willing to improve the neighborhood, then I'm all for it. But it can't be where he's put up a fence. But in the meantime, you got a guy doing full construction on a house next to it, and they ain't a permit, a, a permit in the window that says, okay, you can do this construction or you can change vinyl siding. So how can it be a chain link fence opposed to construction of a house right next to you? And I would encourage you to make a report of that. You know, we can, I, I can report every day. I'm sure Derek would love to hear from me every day because I can report every day. <laughs> well, thank you for being here today. We appreciate it. Uh, and understand your frustration. Any other members of the public that would like to speak to this? Hello, Please state your name. I'm Robert McCready, and I work for the state of South Carolina at the Department of Motor Vehicles. And so, like you guys, I'm a public servant and I help people comply with the law. I'm also a neighbor of the Hudsons on McQueen Street, a little bit further down. And I've got to say, the Hudsons have the best house on the street. When they put it out of the market recently, I even took a tour of part of it because I was so curious to see the inside of it. And I saw the fence go up. And I didn't think of thing of it. I thought, oh, how attractive. It's a dark colored fence. It's very discreet. And what I thought of is that they're a corner lot. And we tend to have burglaries in the area. So in corner lots are more susceptible. So I, it just made complete sense to me that they would have um, a fence. Then I was really shocked to see that yellow sign in the yard about the hearing. I thought, oh my gosh, that's so embarrassing. The nicest house in, on our street. And it really is the nicest one. Um, has the sign talking about their perfectness of defense. I was kind of, um, I just felt bad for them. I took up a little bit of time from work to come up here. I think that um, we can help them, you know, comply with the law. And I think that they have. And I also think about the resources that having that fence in the corner lot has saved the city of Florence. If it's kind of preventing trespass, preventing burglary. We're, for, we're not using the police to go and check things out. The police can use their resources other other places. And that's got to be worth the cost of defense alone to the city of Florence and the taxpayer. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you so much. Thank you. We appreciate it. Uh, would anyone else like to speak to this application? All right, we'll close the public hearing on this matter and open it for board discussion. Any other questions? Uh, any board members have? Uh, I just wanted to go out something hadn't been done about the house next door that's under construction, some sort of construction. I, I'm very frustrated just listening to that report. Right. <laughs> I feel your pain and I can't imagine 
had a drug deal that's next door. And that's all. It is. So um, the cozy. city hadn't done something about it. That's well, not our problem. I mean, we can't do anything about that. Right. Well, we, we had videos of drug dealing going on. Videos, not just hearsay. We had videos. Mm -hmm. It's frustrating. Unfortunately, we can't speak for the police department on this board. And, and if there is indeed final siding going on, and, and final we, going we, up, we, we will inspect that. We will take a look at that. Uh, that's the first I've heard about. Okay. Any other board questions or comments? All right. Is there a motion? I have a motion that the applicant has met all the criteria and issue the certificate of appropriateness to proceed. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. <laughs> All right. Just right seconds. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? All right. Thank you. I will issue the certificate. Next matter for public hearing is DRV case number 2021-12, a request for certificate of appropriateness for the demolition of the house located at 404 South Gargan Street, tax map number 90088-03-020. The property is located in the D3 Arts and Cultural Overlay District. Is this the one didn't get deferred? Is this one you emailed us about? Um, no, this one did not get deferred. Is that a historical commission? Well, it did by then, but y'all still need to review the work. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll take steps for things. <clears throat> All right. This is uh, the house. Um, it was formerly a florist shop. It's located right next to the Waters Powell Funeral Home at the corner of Pine and Darden Street. Um, in the zone of central business district. These are some photos of the outside of the house. It's been abandoned for some time and it has become a codes enforcement issue. Um, in fact, the reason it came to be is I understand the owners were cited by codes enforcement and told to get it demolished. Um, here's some interior photos uh, that is, they do have a problem with um, vagrants and drug dealers getting in or, drug users being inside. Um, plus there's some roof damage, so there's water damage on the inside. Um, here's some more interior photos. I liked the one of the branch with the roses in the upper corner personally, but um, you never know. Um, these are some vicinity photos just showing how the neighborhood has changed and this house has a residential look to it, but everything around it is um, commercial. So, um, and it did, was reviewed by the Historical Commission Monday night, and they did find historical significance to it and asked for a 60 day delay um, in issuing the permit just to see if there's any way to, to renovate or move or save the house. So that was the purpose of that. So um, that concludes staff's report, but the uh, property owners are here. Okay. Um, so we proceed all the way through with our vote, even though it's 60 days. Is Yes, okay. because at the end of that 60 days, if nothing's done, if y'all approve it, then they would still be able to get the, the uh, demo comment. Okay, all right. Thank you. Any questions for staff? All right, uh, then we'll open the public hearing. If anybody would like to speak to this, we'd be happy to hear from you. Yeah. you. You certainly don't have to. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, we're not, this is not our business. But, um, if you don't mind, uh, just state your name for the record, please. I am Stacy Powell Shakley. My brother Chuck Powell is here with me. We, my father, technically, Charles Powell Sr., is the owner of the property, but due to his health, he's not able to be here. Um, the house is situated, obviously, as you can see, in the middle of three lots the funeral home, the house, and then a parking lot. So there's there's no use for the house. It's terribly expensive to maintain. My father has, does not have the means to maintain it. So the, the best alternative we see, unless somebody would buy the whole property and do move the funeral home, um, we just feel like demolishing, maybe using it as better parking situation. Like I said, it is a nuisance. The police are called numerous times, not even by us, but um, 
and boarding it up is, is more expensive, I think, than renovating right now. But anyway, that that's our case. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. We'll close the public hearing on this matter uh, and open up for board discussion. Well, it concerns me that we do not, that the um, historical commission would like six more days. I mean, I have looked at all those pictures and I'm a historical preservation. And if you had seen our house before we got started, there's nothing wrong with that house. <laughs> In particular, and I just I hate to see another. It, it has good architectural features, and I hate to see another house go down on that street. Um, there is a, a house like just a half a block away, the Hamilton Antique Shop that is in beautiful condition, and he keeps it up. And I mean, it's a home, and it has architectural features. And there are a few others that are left on Garden Street. So um, I would like to, I, I just wondered, I guess I'd like to talk to the, um, Charles or Stacy again about how hard did you try to, to sell it or can it be moved or have you looked into that? And um, if, if you had 60 more days, would it be possible for you to? To research it a little better to see if maybe advertise to see if somebody would like to move it to another lot because it really is a lovely house and it can be i know it can be restored <laughs> um, but anyway that's and i think even if we issue the certificate today it's still a stay for 60 days so okay we are pursuing other options but uh, until that is Solidified, I think this is the avenue that we're pursuing right now. I think it would be very difficult to move. It has a basement and a courtyard in the middle of it. So moving it, I think, is. We have a question to try to ask if you <coughs> we told him you just give to him if he wants to move it. He looked into it and it's still there. Yeah. Um, one question for staff to Ms. Bike's point How do we? Um, Properties that are starting to go into decline. I mean, how is that monitored by codes enforcement? At what point do they? That seems to be the common denominator. Is it's always too late before anybody pays attention? Yeah, and um, you know, co codes enforcement a, a lot of times you know pays attention to homes that are in really bad shape you know i mean they, they have declining you know caving roofs and um, failing structurally in, in many cases um you know i mean this this home i'm not sure i, I don't believe it's an in codes enforcement um action at this time i don't think it's to that state yet you know because the property is you know the, the property itself is maintained and, and, and you know in the, in the house from the street view isn't that detracting. Now, um, they likely keep it up just because they want to keep up their own property and it's next to their business. So, um, and we applaud them for that. Um, however, um, saving these type properties is difficult. You know, I know we've talked about this in the past. Um, you know, there's no real funding source to, to help these homes. Um, you know, the, the historical commission you know, they have good intentions, um, but but I think they lack funding, you know, and, and to, to actually save these properties. Um, you know, it, it may be nice in these neighborhoods if we had a, a mechanism to identify these type of properties and um, maybe come up with some plans or some ways to um, pinpoint the ones that are either in, you, you know, entering into that state of decline and or Peg some that we that we deem historical and would like to to save. So perhaps a more proactive approach. <clears throat> this may be in order. And I think I would we certainly know, encourage yeah. that. We have been going through this same issue yeah. ever since this board was formed. We never get it until it's too late, and then you have to tear it down. Mm -hmm. And it's not fair to us 
and it's not fair to the property owners out of the city to do it that way because we don't like to tear things down to do right. wrong. They can be safe. And I wonder if one thing that we could ask for within city staff, maybe the city uh, administrator has to do this, but the police know when they go look at a house that's abandoned. I mean, they know as soon as they step foot on the property that it's abandoned. And so maybe if just somehow, whenever they encounter an abandoned house, they, it's, when their report gets filed, it gets something triggered over at codes enforcement or your office or somewhere mm -hmm. to at least note that, you know, this place, because that's usually going to indicate that it's starting down this path. Right. Um, and and we do have a list of, of abandoned vacant properties, and we do have um, probably, I mean, I, I know actively in codes enforcement, I, I think Bob has over 130 properties tied up with codes enforcement um, for, for demo orders or unsafe conditions throughout the city. You right. know, um, one thing also that, that I have budgeted for um, our neighborhood plans for Maple Park and for Timron Park. And, and part of that would be a windshield survey and, and some surveys associated with, um, you know, archiving some of these homes and inventorying the conditions of some of these homes is a good start. Um, we're getting through the comprehensive plan at this point, but after that, I, I, we plan to start that. And that would address some of the concerns or, or get some of that knowledge on record for Timrod and Maple Park. Um, you know, we could, you know, the Dargan Street, the Arts and Cultural District, those areas are, you know, and, and the remainder of, of the commercial district is small enough that we could probably either tag it on with that and, or staff could handle that, you know, you know, as part of that project fairly easily. So, um, you know, we, we'd be glad to do that as, as staff and, and or, you know, add that on or, or make sure that gets done as part of the Maple Timra Park Plan. Um, and, and in turn, that may give us some opportunities for funding too. You know, oftentimes when you have a plan in place and have things identified, it could give us some funding to identify um, the, the bones and what we want to say there. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Thank you. That'd be great. I think we'll do that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I've got a couple of things I want to say. Um, this is Scott. Um, first of all, I think that the fact that this is a residence or, or, or was a residence should not be a, a factor. Uh, South Dargan Street is, has always traditionally been a residential street. And there, as Ms. Ms. Bike said, uh, the Hamilton House is effectively a commercial building that was originally a residence. The McLeod House on the corner um, down there was a, a residence. Um, there's still several other residences like the Gladstone House that are gonna be torn down if we let this, this trend continue. Um, and, and I just think it's, um, you've got the old Presbyterian school, you got the dorms that went with the Presbyterian school um, that are on Dargan, and they're gonna get picked off one at a time. And the, and the issue is gonna be we can't afford to maintain them and we can't afford to renovate them. Um, and I think that if you keep a roof on a building and keep the envelope intact, uh, that's not a tremendous amount of money to, uh, to preserve uh, a building until it can be renovated. I think when you, when you let it go and you, and you compromise the envelope, then you might as well, then you're giving up from, from, from that point on. And it hadn't been too many years since this building was a, a viable business. Uh, and it had a, it, it was a, a, a viable business in a, in a functioning building. And I think it's less than what, maybe eight years ago that the florist was there. And um, I just think that we're, we're trending in the wrong direction here. Thank you. Uh, anyone else on the board? Any questions or comments? All right, uh, is there a motion? Oh, we 
have to go one way or the other. We do. Um, to be fair to the owners, I will make a motion to to submit the certificate of appropriateness as presented. Okay. All right. So there's a motion uh, to allow the demolition subject to the 60 days that the historical commission has. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second. Okay. Mr. seconds that motion. All right. Any discussion of that motion? A lot of times I've found that, <clears throat> and I've looked at a lot of houses that are in bad shape. It comes down to a question of can it be can somebody afford to do it or not? And if they can't afford to do it, then it's just going to get worse. So, you know, you you, you kind of have somebody in a bind where you tell them they can't tear it down, they can't afford to fix it, and then you're just waiting and waiting and waiting until some point you, it gets to where you have to tear it down. So, it, unless there's some sort of funding or process to stop it from getting there, like we talked about. It's you pretty much it's going to get gone at some point because it will become too far gone. There's no mechanism to make them do it that I that I know of that can make them repair it. Um, all they can do is stop, and the best maybe the city could put a lien on it. I think. Okay. Any other comments? Scott, again. Um, Having said all the things that I said, I'm also sympathetic to the to the owner. I think that the the biggest problem with this house, I believe, is its proximity to a very viable uh, ongoing business on the corner there. I think uh, it, it it is from a very practical standpoint. It wants to be parking, so I understand I understand its 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 practical value, and also understand why they would want to tear it down. Uh, I just think that, you know, we didn't put the house there, but I think me and others like me, I think they just have a feel of responsibility. You know, I'm old enough to remember when almost every property on South Dargan was a nice house. And we've, we've lost tons and tons of them. And, and I can promise you, this is not the last one that's going to get torn down. If we, if we just use this, this very uh, sort of just bottom line sort of mentality. All right, any other comments? All right, well, there's a motion, I'm sorry. Um, there's a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, uh, opposed? Aye. Uh, all right. uh, Mr. Healy, I'm sorry, I didn't catch you. Yeah, I'm, I'm opposed. Okay, so three, three, uh, tie, I guess. Well, there's seven of you, so what was Mr. Tedder's? I just don't see how, I mean, in, in a situation like this, and I think Mike touched on it, I mean, it's just going to get worse and worse. I mean, if the owner is not capable of doing what needs to be done, then I think it goes back to, Mr. Chairman, what you're talking about. We've got to put some kind of a plan of action to, to help them. I mean, if we want to preserve, and I totally agree with, with what Scott and Miss Bike and Eric, you're saying, and I agree with it, but I don't, you know, to the fairness to the owner, I, you know, I can't say that, you know, personally that, you know, no, you can't tear it down. Let's just let it sit there and fall down. Now, if the city has a program that can say, you know, we're going to, allocate this, you know, to put the roof on it, to save it for another 15 years, 10 years, until that investor that can't afford to come in and buy it and rehab it. I, vo I voted no for this motion because 
we, they still, there's 60 days here that the Historical Commission has asked for. It could come before us again. Um, maybe you could talk with some with the historical commission or some you know somebody like that that may be able to help you. We're not in a position to to help. If we hear somebody that might like to buy the house or the property, we could let you know. But that's not our that's not our business. That's not why we're here. Well, um, the, the problem with it is that it was. I mean, my father, when our dad bought the property from the right. daughter's family back in 1982, the house came with it. Right. Because it's sitting right there in the midst yeah. of the, the U-shaped fracture of the lump that is specified for the funeral home. It wasn't bought to live in. And the flower right. shop used it temporarily when their shop burned. And it went on much longer than we had intended their use of. I understand. So, you know, it wasn't... He really love the house, let buy it, and just let it fall apart. It it just came with the purchase of the funeral home and the property. And you have had businesses in there mm -hmm. until recently. That one was in there. Yeah. And they asked if they could use it for six months while they rebuilt it. They moved it until that move to purchase it. Okay, uh, well then, it, I believe it was four to three. I'm sorry, I don't think I counted myself in the seven. Um, so the certificate will be issued, uh, and I would just encourage staff to focus on this um, so that we can, you know, had we been able to identify this as a problem two years ago, maybe, um, you know, more efforts could have been made to try to save it. But, we we will and we'll I'll, I'll take this to the city manager and I'll also um, maybe reach out to the H historic commission and express our concerns because because I think um, if if we could work more closely with with group like that we might have a conference. It's the same problem we encountered a few years ago, time after time with the downtown buildings mm -hmm. when the roof started of caved in and the floors collapsed. There's almost no, nothing left to do unless you happen to find that person who has the money and is interested right. in the next week. Right. And, and many of our, the city's incentive programs extend to certain areas of the city. Unfortunately, they, they don't expand to, to this particular area yet. So, Okay. Um, that's the mass. Uh, oh, no, sorry. One more. Um, this case is being deferred, so we need to approve that. ERB case number 2021-13, request for certificate of appropriateness for a sign at 507 South Derby Street, tax map 90088-06-005, properties of the D3 Arts and Cultural Overlay District and the Irby Street Carter Overlay District. And the applicant has asked that this be deferred to the June meeting. All in favor of that deferral, say aye. 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 All right, that's deferred. Our next meeting is June 9th. Uh, and with that, uh, if there's no other business, we'll adjourn. Okay. Thank you.